Hey, welcome. Oh man, it's echoey in here. Anyways, I'm down here in my bunker. Welcome to the Wednesday HR TV show. This is not live right now, but I'll be hanging out with you in the chat and I'm hoping uh, there'll be others as well. My friend Bobby, KD6KWV, has been building some awesome go boxes lately. If or when something happens and you have to pack up your house and go, you most likely won't have time to grab your ham gear. Or maybe you just like to get out and activate some parks, do some camping, do some hiking. Uh, not to mention, you can even operate these at home. But the idea is, is they are self-contained and they are ready to get you on the air. From the radio, to the batteries, to the tuner, you name it, you can put it in these boxes. Let me know in the chat or comments if you have a Go Box or maybe you're currently working on one. This video was shot during Field Day 2020 and it was pretty windy, so hopefully you guys can bear with it. Let's check it out. Bobby? You got plugs on the side, I see. Dual USBs on each side. Anderson power pole with power out and in. This Ooh. is designed to umbilically connect and parallel as many batteries as you want with a custom system that I've made. Yeah. It's all plug and play. You ready for this? Oh, drum roll. Drum roll, please. Very clean. Look how clean that is. That's like store bought. Even with the Yesu brand sticker. Ooh, look how flush that is. Or the tuner. Uh, you know, I've, I've tried, but I. <laughs> That's the 891. So we are HF ready in that case. This is actually, you can just run this by itself without, uh, if you're just doing uh, 15 watts, 20 watts or less. Yeah, so then here is the, uh, we saw this at Winterfield Day, this yeah. iteration. See. Quick disconnect spring loaded hinge. Ooh, spring loaded. Yeah. More power poles, a nice meter. Yeah, and so. To monitor so everything. This one has a 20 amp hour bio NO. Now, this is the cool thing about this everything is fully self contained. So, in the back. Thank you, Vanna. Ooh, I like that back door. That's a nice little quick release. Okay, and this is where all the good stuff is. And Whoa. this was the biggest challenge of my build. Here's your, here's your HF wire antenna. Okay, here's your mic. Here's the big bad boy that runs everything. Wow, it just so slides in there. The biggest design thing of building this was to get this tough book in there. That was my number one priority. <laughs> and so I built everything else off of the design of getting that. Check oh, out the yeah. Front of it, Chris. Oh. Ah, gotcha. Oh, you can get your head in there. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. this will actually sit up here. It's gonna go like that. With a bigger table, I have an iPad that sits here, an iPad that sits here. So one will run the SDR play that's inside. <coughs> one will run QRZ and one will run Google Maps. <laughs> Look at that stack. Man, you're ready to fly. Yeah, I think it came out clean, all things considered. You know, it's got uh, uh, dual Anderson power ports, one on the side, one in the back with solar input. Uh, you can parallel all your batteries, just plug and play. There's a 20 amp hour lithium polymer in that one a 12 amp hour lithium polymer in there, which you can actually combine together through the power ports just in one cord. If you want to have, you know, all of the power being managed in one system, you just plug your solar into it and it'll charge the whole thing. And you can do that umbilically to as many batteries as you want to set up on it. Yeah, heck yeah. I tried to keep the front clean and put all your stuff on the side. So you can run your cell phones, your laptops, you got dual, uh, USB on this side, dual USB on this side, Anderson power port here uh, with power in and out, a cigarette lighter in the side here, plug, 
and again, power out. Now this power out is when this is plugged in. Oh. Okay, so when you plug this in, it's got a, a 25 amp PowerWorks power supply in there that's running through this Westgate Epic power uh, management system. So you have hookup to the battery, you have hookup to all of your power poles, and then you have uh, power coming in. When the power comes in, this gate switches everything. Right, yeah. And then charges all your batteries. It's got a place inside. You can jump the caps to, to manage whatever battery uh, uh, chemistry that you're using. Lipos, gel cells, whatever. Um, so it's set up to charge the lipos. All you do is plug this thing in and it does the rest for you. If there's a power failure, this Epic power gate's designed to work in your ham shack. So if you have a power outage, the second the power goes out, that will divert you right to your batteries. Yeah, that's clean. You know, and, and uh, so here, if you notice, I have solar in. Oh. So I plug my solar panel in there, it automatically switches everything over to solar. I don't do a thing. Every bracket on the inside mounting every radio in here was hand cut, bent, drilled holes, specifically measured to each thing. So all of these were all, all made, all handmade. There's aluminum shelf in here to separate everything. And the way that I designed it, it is so easy to service anything with just taking one or two uh, screws yeah, out. That's a big one. You know. Um, anything. I mean, I literally can just undo these wires and I can slide this whole battery out and everything's connected, plug and play. Yeah, that battery is so tucked in there. It's pretty amazing that your computer fits in there. Yeah, there's a 20 amp hour lithium polymer battery up in there. Yeah, there I can, I can see the LiPo 4. Yeah, All right. And now the difference between that and the BioNO, the reason I went with this, is 12.8 volts. Okay. The BioNOs were 12, you know, and so uh, with that extra boost, now it did cost me 300 bucks. It was like 289 at battery bulbs and more or something like that, where the BioNO at 20 amp hour was like 225. Okay. You know, so it was about 75 bucks more, but you got 12.8 volts and 256 watt hours heck yeah and that's really only from about 240 watt hours so it's not like it's this big bang but the 12.8 volts is huge um a huge difference because that's that's getting your your wattage out at a more stable rate well let's plug it in i figured that i would uh so now what i have to do is i've got to re i've got to totally remember this radio <laughs> and remind myself, um, and I'm so used to, uh, um, let's see, where's the block button? I'm so used to, uh, all right, so we got him into some coax, really nice coax, I should say. He's plugged in over here to the DX Commander. That has been a uh, fantastic antenna for this field day. So it looks like your speaker fires out of the back? No, it's actually right here. Okay. But it's the one thing that I haven't done yet is it's it's like literally right under the radio. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm mm. gonna do the drill the speaker holes right, yeah. and put a speaker mesh yeah. in there and then it's gonna come pumping out, you know, and and uh, if you want, I'll pull the front screws. No, no, you don't get to do that. So you can see. Spin the knob, let's see but, who's uh, talking. What? Oh, that was some cool kit, Bobby. Nice build, nice job, very clean. I mean, that looks store-bought. But, uh, you know, I couldn't, we couldn't let Bobby go this easy. He, uh, he just tinkers, he invents, he installs. He is a man of many mysteries. So anyways, I wanted to... Uh, let you look at his custom van he's been building. So that's what's uh, here behind us. And you're going to be blown away with how much uh, stuff he's got going on on radios. Bobby, let's have a look at your van. D-Star, DMR, P25, Moto Turbo. Holy smokes, look at the inside of this thing. Let me get in here and expose for it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. 
Yeah. Man, that is way cool. Oh, we're about to see that box here in a little bit. Very nice. Yeah, what a cool little van here, man. You are. Hey, hit the, hit the switches. Let me see the front of this mad man pajama. Oh, yeah. He also has been uh, fabricating some homebrew antennas. So uh, we figured we'd pull those out of the back of his van and set them up. You know, he came a little late to field day, so he didn't get to get those on the air. He plugged into a DX Commander. But uh, Bobby, let's let's take a look at these antennas you've been home brewing at home. Oh, I got to show you my makeshift antenna. Oh, I got to show you this. I'm not gonna pull it out, but I want to show you what I made. I don't know if it's gonna work, <laughs> but this is my first concoction. Now remember, all this stuff oh, is yeah. garage build. Yeah. Okay, so this is a tripod off of my. I used to have LED lights and I modified it. And so supposedly, if everything goes planned, right, yeah. I literally should be able to take this guy. And now what antenna is that up there? That is an ATAS. Oh, Yesu. It's yeah, an yeah. all band, all mode, HF. That would be fantastic for my radio with the uh, 991A. Yeah, and so I just, I, it's kind of funny how I, I just was just messing around and I actually found all the right pieces. The way you put it together, you actually have. Oh, yeah. Okay. Little, ground radials. Yep, ground radials, your coax. And it just happened to all fit in there. <laughs> yeah. You know. Not and very uh, cool. it should go up and down per band when you tune it. This is my answer to trying Ooh. to get my wire at least oh, yeah. 20 feet. Now is that this, a pool pole? This, yes, it's a pool pole on another, modified on another <laughs> old broken stand that I had. And you literally, I got a little line, I marked it because I figured, you know. All right. Now, because everybody said, well, what about, you know, and I didn't have any guy line. Yeah. And so, let's see if that's gonna get no. Here, I'll put my hand on it. Was I actually <laughs> took my weight, take this off. Oh man. Put it through here. And you can actually direct the weight in different areas. I was experimenting yesterday. Okay, because they'll sit actually up here. Like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. And sometimes it's nice just to have some free weights with you if you want to just you know, <laughs> get a good quick 10 minute or So, a... I mean, I don't know. I mean, it looks like it's holding. <laughs> yeah, well, I tell you what, this is the place to test it. It has been nothing but windy. You see, I don't know if you see that porta potty right there. Yeah, you heard it blew. That actually was sitting uh, more perpendicular to the road. Right now it's not. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks so much for uh, checking out Bobby's stuff, hanging out with us here on this Wednesday. We'll be back next week. I believe we'll be live and in the flesh. Kevin and I have some new stuff planned. But, uh, you know, Bobby's a heck of a guy. If you're around on 3-3, that's probably where you're going to find him. He's also uh, very into the digital stuff, so you never know whose node he's going to pop out of next. But uh, I think he's got other videos of him building and installing these. So stay tuned. Look out for future shows because I think we're going to get that footage from him and, and cut it all up. So uh, I'll say 7-3, everyone, and see you next week.